Wow. It is yet Easter. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we have hope in yet another day. Because he lives, we can proudly face the future. Our friends, it is still Easter. And we come this morning to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I don't know what your week has been like. <laughs> I don't know the stress and trials you've been through, the joys and celebrations you've had. But I do know this. <laughs> because he lives, you and I can find joy in the midst of our sadness. Because he lives, we can find grace in the midst of our mistakes. <laughs> because he lives, we can find peace in the midst of a storm. <laughs> and because he lives, we can know love even when we feel as though we are unlovable. So I, I don't know what you need this morning. But I hope that you have come here seeking the Lord to offer a message, a word, a song, a, a inspiration for you so that you this day might be able to move forth and go forth in the journey yet ahead. If you came hungry, have mercy. You came to the place to get fed. If you come thirsty, this is the place you came for good drink. If you came because you're wearied, this is a place that you can find rest. So I welcome all of you, my brothers, my sisters, my siblings, my friend, my family to this time of worship. We might allow the spirit of the Lord to pour on around and through us. So I welcome you in spirit and in truth because, because he lives. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. Amen.
The scripture lesson this morning is found in John 21, verses 1 to 14. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were too many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So, Peter, so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, my friends, Christ has risen. Hallelujah, he has risen indeed. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Holy One, I come standing before you desiring to be cleansed and washed anew, that your spirit might pour into me and that I and it may become one. That the very utterances of my mouth, the, uh, the very utterances from my lips, may be those, oh God, that you desire to be spoken this day and shared with these, your people, and with me, myself, oh God. God, come. Come and allow your spirit to flow over each and every one within the sound of my voice, O oh God, that they might hear a word from you, not from me, but O oh God, that you might de that I might decrease and that you and your spirit might increase in what it is that I share this day. Lord, we come this morning, some weary, some, some, some tired, some joyous and some celebratory some anxious and some nervous. We come this morning, some crying, some weeping, some in pain. We come, some wanting, some having more than enough. We come just as we are. And we invoke your presence in this moment. The very words that are spoken, the very things that are said, the very things that are shared will build us this day. Not, not for the months ahead, but for this day, that we might be your true servants in the world. This is my humble prayer. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. 
if you might just uh, bear with me just for a few moments. Our message this morning is entitled, Breakfast by the Sea. Breakfast by the Sea. In our word this morning, we see that the disciples are still sitting, waiting for something to happen that they might acknowledge the Christ in their life. They've already seen him come into a locked room and show him, show them their, his hands and the pierced side. They've already seen him a second time come into a room with a shut door and once again showing his hands and his side and, and using a familiar phrase, peace be with you. But this day, this day in, in John's chapter 21, they are yet sitting, waiting. They are yet sitting, contemplating, even though they have seen the Lord. Simon Peter, the fisherman, maybe he's tired, maybe he's bored, who knows, but whatever it is, he decides, I'm going fishing. And the other disciples say, well, you know what? You're going fishing. We're going to go fishing with you. Now, I like fishing. I love the fish. I love going out and sitting on a boat or, or, or even standing on the seashore on the, on the banks of the, of, the, of the water, casting my net. There's something, something tranquil about going and fishing. Just the peace and serenity, hearing the water and the waves at times roll back and forth whether you're in the boat or on the, on the shore. There's something about just being there in the silence of fishing. But it's apparently that's not why Simon, Peter, and them were going fishing necessarily. It appears that they might have been going fishing because it's the, 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 the job, the career that they know. They're going to go back out and get into the boat and fish. We're not told if there was no food, if they were hungry, but we knew, we know that this was a, a, the way they made their living. And so they, 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 they all, seven of them, go out. Simon the fisherman, and by the way, Zebedee and, his, and, and, and the, two, the two brothers, they know about fishing because if you remember, when they are called by Christ some three years hence, that's where they were found. They were found fishing. So these are, are not rookies. These are experienced fishermen. So they go fishing, and, and as typical, they do fishing because that's what they know. How often, when something happens in our lives, something that we don't understand or don't comprehend, that we go back to the normal things we used to do, that's where we find comfort. We find comfort in going back to doing the very things that we used to do. Don't fault them for going fishing, but they go fishing. Because they, in this moment, have not figured out what to do next. Even though Christ has been in their presence. What about you and me? Is that sense of always doing what we've always done? Well, my friends, as our story tells us, they do what they've always done. And they go fishing. And what do they do? They catch nothing all night long. And they're making their way back off the waters maybe to call it a night. But Jesus is on the seashore. And I just want to imagine that he had, he had not only just stood on the shore, but he'd walked out a ways into the water. <laughs> and he'd walked out a ways to the water and he says to them, he says, eh, you, you don't have nothing, do you? You didn't catch anything. And they're like, no. Didn't try to hide it. Didn't try to pretend. Didn't blame anything, just simply said, nope, we ain't got nothing. And Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus says, cast your net to the other side of the boat. And here's what they do. It is so amazing. It, 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 they, they turn their boat around, I want to imagine, because they were, had come in a ways, and they cast their net out once again on the other side of the boat. 
and there they caught fish. Our scripture tells us they caught such a load that there was 153 fish. We even get the number, 153 fish in the net. Jesus with breakfast by the sea is reminding them once again that sometimes in order, in order to do the work of, of the Lord, in order to catch what you need to do, you can't not always do it on one side. In essence, you have to cast your net to the other side of the boat. Have we not had to cast our net in this past year with COVID-19 on the other side of the boat? Have we not had to do worship in a totally different way than we've ever done it before? Have we, have we not had to change in how we have meals together? Doing meals sometimes on, on, on a Zoom call or, or on a Skype call. Have we not done things differently and had to cast our net on the other side of the boat? Have we not had to, had to change our work styles and, and work schedules? Not that working from home was, 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 was not available a long time ago, but look at where it is now. We've had to cast our net on the other side of the boat. My friends, Jesus is telling the disciples, you need to cast your net on the other side. We're going to have that same conversation, all right, that continual conversation as we began to come back to worship together as a family. How will we do this? Will we do it the same way we've always done it? Because indeed we will try. Because that what we are, that's what we are, our example this morning. They go out and they fish in the same way, the same thing they've always done. And this sense of creativity and looking on the other side of the boat was not what they saw. But when you're having breakfast with Jesus, huh? Jesus will, will talk to you about doing something a little different than the way you've always done it. Jesus tells them to cast their net on the other side. Cast your net on the other side. The disciples were willing to do that. I do want to acknowledge that I think many of us have gone to casting our net on the other side a little bit begrudgingly. It's not been easy doing this COVID-19 protocols. We've, we've, we've been disappointed with having to wear masks and having to cover our hands and, and having to, to not be in crowds and, and in, in essence, not being able to physically be in worship. But I want to remind you and me that wherever we are in praise and prayer of the Lord, the Lord is there. <laughs> whether we're in a barn out in the woods, sitting by a cozy fire, well, whether, whether we're on a mountain top, whether we're down in the darkest valley, that wherever we are, we are praising the Lord and the Lord is present with us. And we are going to have to have that conversation, that breakfast conversation around how worship is done. But Jesus doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. Jesus, as they are trying to haul in the, 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 the fish that they've caught, they're trying to haul in the load that they have. One of the disciples realizes only the Lord, <laughs> only the Lord could have, could have gotten these fish to come. Only the Lord could have told us what we ought to do. And listening to the Lord, we were obedient. And there are 150 fish, more fish than we could ever imagine. And they turn and they tell Peter, Peter, that's the Lord. And Peter, we are not told, we're told that he's embarrassed because he's naked before the Lord. Now, I want to clarify, he's not butt naked. He's got on what we would call the loincloth. That in that day was still something he would have had on. He wouldn't have been completely uh, bare. But in this case, he is naked. And to him, he's naked before the Lord. He, he tries to dress and he jumps in the water. And Jesus says, not making the front of it, Jesus says, uh, give me one of the fish. Uh, give me some fish because there's a fire over there and, and let's sit down and let's, let's really have breakfast. Let's really have breakfast. Let, let, let's have breakfast together. My friends, I, I know that many of us already have heard this, 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 this before, but breakfast is... Nutritionists tell us that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. 
we, we, we need to have breakfast to get us through for the journey. And if we don't have a, a good breakfast, then the rest of the day just ain't going to be right. It's going to be off in some way that we need to get up in the morning and we need to have a fresh breakfast. Indeed, the disciples have been fishing all night long, haven't eaten a meal that we've been told of. So they had to be needing some strength and energy. And Jesus already setting the example well before the doctors and scientists have ever said you need a good breakfast. Jesus already set the example in saying, come, come, let's have breakfast. So he, he takes the fish and, and he takes the bread and, 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 and he's cooking the fish and, and we're not given a time frame in which all of this happens, but we know that there's a fire. So we know there's gonna be cooked fish. And so Jesus in this moment, there is there, the, the, the bread is shared with him and then the, the, the fish is shared with him. In that moment, disciples together, we are told, realize that this is the Lord. <laughs> Not one of them, but the group realizes that this is the Lord who we are having breakfast with. But they do not say a word. They live in their own personal acceptance, their own personal knowledge of what they are experiencing. Some might call this a communion breakfast. For indeed, Jesus takes the bread and feeds them. And he takes the fish and he feeds them. Why? Why do we have this, this, this before us? Because my friends, we need a good breakfast and we need a good breakfast with Jesus. Did you hear me? We need a good breakfast and we need a good breakfast with Jesus. Because if we don't have a good breakfast, and we don't have a good breakfast with Jesus, then you and I can never cast our net to the other side of the boat. You and I can never stand up for justice when injustice when we see it. We cannot stand up for the least and the lost and the lonely because if we don't have a good breakfast, we're going to be tired on the journey. If we don't have a good breakfast, we're going to be grumpy on the journey. If we don't have a good breakfast, we'll be complaining all the way. Jesus is telling us that you need to have a good breakfast. Not simply a breakfast that just simply replenishes your body, but you need to have a good breakfast that replenishes your mind so that you can stand up for the in, in, to the injustices that are going on. You can stand up for those in the LBGTQI community and not get tired. You can stand up against racial injustice and not get weary. You can stand up for sexism and classism without ever having to, to feel like you can't go on. Yes, you might get tired. Yes, you might get weary. Yes, you might get worn. But I want you to know, God wants you to know, Christ wants you to know that when you have a good breakfast with the Lord, <laughs> You can do all things through him who strengthens you. You can go into places that others would never go. You can, you can do things that others would never do. You can heal when others think there's no, no doctor in the land can cure them. You can take and lift up those who are feeling like no one ever cares. Holy, if you would have just a breakfast with Jesus. If we would have breakfast with Jesus every morning. <laughs> Because Jesus is letting us know that he is standing and waiting to have breakfast with you and me. He desires to have a meal with us in the morning, not not in the evening, but in the morning that we might start our day. As a child growing up, we used to, I used to get up every morning and make my bed. And then my mom would be in there fixing breakfast. And then the, the thing would be is after I made the bed, we had a, 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 a when I made my bed up and, and, and then I would get down on my knees, <laughs> get down on my knees next to my bed and give God thankful for the restful sleep I had. Give God thanks for raising me up another day. Give God thanks for my family and my friends. Give God thanks for all of those who, who don't even know me in their, in their own way. Give God thanks for the abuse and scorn. Give God thanks for the joy and the celebrations. And then what would I do? <laughs> Go sit at the table. I'd sit at the table and my mother would be sitting there with me and, and we, would, we would have breakfast together. 
In essence, we had breakfast with Jesus every morning. I had breakfast before I went off to school, even though it was hard sometimes. I had breakfast before I went off to school, even though I struggled with, with what I was doing in the community I lived in. But because I had breakfast with Jesus, there was no storm I could not get through. <laughs> Uh, there, was, there, was, there was no worry that I could not overcome. There was no stress or strain that I could not endure. Indeed, if you and I are not having breakfast with Jesus, who is standing at the seashore, inviting you and me every morning of every day to come and to have breakfast. Because without breakfast, you and I cannot stand with Adam Toledo's family. Without breakfast. You and I cannot stand with Dante Waters today without a good breakfast. You and I cannot stand against the gun violence that continues to go on in our nation over and over and over and over and over again without a good breakfast. You and I cannot stand with those who are being kicked to the curb, cast out, cast upon. If you and I don't have a good breakfast, we can't fight, fight for mental health care for those who need it. If you and I don't have a good breakfast, we can't get out and do what the Lord desires us to do. That is why Jesus had breakfast with his disciples. They've been out all night long. They have been working, trying to catch fish and caught nothing. But Jesus is offering them a message on this third visit. On this third appearance, Jesus is offering them a message. Matter of fact, I want you to know that really, this ought to be considered the fourth visit. Because remember, the first visit was the one between Mary Magdalene and Jesus to begin with. So Jesus has appeared before humanity four times by this point to let them know that I was put in a tomb, thought to remain there for the rest of my days. But because of the power of my God, I got up. And because I got up, there is life for you. Because I got up, we can yet have breakfast right here, right now, to give you strength for the journey. Because I got up, ha! sisters and brothers, Jesus is calling you and me to have breakfast with him. We, don't, we, we may not have breakfast with him by the sea as those early disciples did, but he's inviting us to have breakfast with him in our very homes, in our very lives, in our very presence, in order so that we might stand up today to do the work of the Lord, that we might love kindness, that we might walk humbly with our God, that we might do the will of the Father to care for the least, the lost, and the lonely, that the widow will not be left out on the curb, that our children needing assistance will not be kicked to the curb around needing better educational materials, that those who are struggling because of racism that is going on, whether it's, whether it's among Blacks, whether it's among Latinos, whether it's among Japanese and Asians, that we will say no. We will stand up and we will fight. But you can't do it if you don't have a good breakfast. You can't do it all day long if you don't start your day off with Jesus and a good breakfast. And so Jesus is reminding you and me this day that we are called this morning to have breakfast by the sea. I don't know. I don't know what your trials and tribulations are. But sisters and brothers, I'm going to tell you, we can't run this race without him. We can't do this thing alone all by ourselves. And so this day, the Lord is involved, inviting you and inviting me to sit down and have breakfast. This morning when I had my, my toast and eggs, I, I, I knew in my prayers as I was eating, I was having breakfast with the Lord. What about you? When you're having breakfast in the morning, <laughs> Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to walk into your life? Are you taking time to offer prayer to the Lord? Thanks for the food you ate. Thanks for the sleep you got. Thanks for the house you live in. Thanks for the clothes on your back. Thanks for the shoes on your feet. Look out now. We, we have so much to look at. Jesus was reminding the disciples, in the midst of your sense of struggle, I'm here. I know you. you, you I've been before you three or four times. You still haven't figured it out yet. But let's have breakfast. Let's start anew. I pray this day. I pray this day that as you and I seek to be Christ in the world, that we know it starts with a good breakfast with the Lord. And I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to each and every day be fed nutritionally by my body food, but also be fed spiritually by God's food, come, come. 
let us have breakfast. Breakfast. Breakfast by the sea. May God bless you. Amen. Let us now come together in time of prayer to be love and light and food to one another as we share our joys and our concerns. When someone offers up a prayer request, I will respond briefly and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. What do we have to share with one another this morning? I need to give you all permission to unmute. You are now able to unmute yourselves. Catherine? Yes, Susan. Yes, I'd like to ask for uh, prayers for all of the high school kids who are returning mm -hmm. to school tomorrow, including mine. So first time in over a year and may their transition back to school be um, safe and uh, easy. For all who are returning to school, for all who are teaching them in this time of great transition, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would oh, like Karen. This is Karen. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I just want to let you know that I am extremely wealthy and rich in friendships and brothers and sisters. And I want to thank all of you for your prayers and support. I am absolutely amazed, flabbergasted, delighted, happy, excited, Amen. everything. And I know this is, I'm, I'm living a little glimpse of life in heaven. And I thank you so much for your uh, visitations, your food, your Okay, you know what I mean, yeah? And I really look forward to the times when we can be back in church, sharing a meal together, having breakfast with Jesus and with each other. And I just want to thank you for the encouragement and I encourage all of you to really, really to continue to trust the Lord for all your needs. He's here, he's there with us and he, uh, he just can't wait to show us his love. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Corrine, for that testimony, for your journey, for your healing journey, for all of those who walk with you, all of us who walk with you. Um, we give thanks to be together on this road. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would just like to Thank the Lord for the hope. Uh, it's so good to see Sister Corrine. We know what she's been through this week. And to hear her sounding so strong and encouraging the rest of us. Um, and for hope in the world, we have good things happening. We do see a lot of despair, but over all of that, we have hope. So just thank God that we can hope. For hope, we give thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for our students who are away from home in college or elsewhere, um, facing finals, um, wrapping up an academic year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would, I would like to offer up um, just a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, I'm driving up to Chicago this weekend and was planning to spend the night with friends in Indianapolis, but my car broke down just north of Nashville. Um, and I had forgotten that I have friends in Gallatin, Tennessee, um, just north. 
of Nashville, about 20 minutes from where I broke down. So um, just, I'm so grateful for them. It was actually my Indianapolis friends that texted them and um, the car, it's just an inconvenience, but I was able to spend time with them. And I especially want to um, just prayer of thanks for, um, for especially for Micah, their daughter who gave up her bed so that I could have a good night's rest. And now I get to have a pancake breakfast with them as well. So um, just very grateful. For friends along the road, um, and for traveling mercies for you, and particularly for Micah, who so general, generously offered her bed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up all of the other K-8 students who are going back um, for the fourth quarter who have until now been studying remotely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I want to lift up. Go ahead. Also continue to pray uh, for this constant tug of war between CTU and uh, uh, CPS. Um, we have lives uh, that are caught in this between in this war. All those kids we need to be educated, and it's this is a difficult time. But uh, in order for the country to get back on its feet, I mean, we do need educated children, and um, so just pray because um, I can see that some are really left uh, are forgotten in the middle of this war. Let's let this war be for the benefit of of kids of, of uh, students and. Uh, just pray. Thank you. For our leaders and our teachers um, as they discern and sometimes come into conflict in that discernment over what is best for our city, for our students, that all may have wisdom um, and make decisions in the best interests of the well-being of, of our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I want to lift up uh, our sisters, brothers, and siblings in Myanmar, uh, where the numbers that we are getting are plus, that, that the average age of young people who are being killed is 17, that there are 800, 900,000 that have been killed already. Uh, there have been thousands upon thousands who've been detained. Um, and so, and, and those who are, who, are, who are just gone missing. So we want to pray for, uh, we want to pray for this, for this nation, but not only for them, but also pray for those who are our siblings who are here, who are worried about family who are there. So we do pray for what is going on in Myanmar. For our family in Burma and for their family in the diaspora and facing this time of great violence, Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. If we have nothing else to share out loud, I just want to lift up all of the communities here in Chicago and Minneapolis. Um, this has been a really hard week. It's been a heartbreaking week. It's been a, a traumatic week. Um, and in ways that are not new, um, that are familiar and yet no less heartbreaking, um, no less devastating for their familiarity. Um, I lift up the family of Dante Wright, the family of Adam Toledo, um, the family of all who are struggling with violence that is state-sponsored or inflicted by representatives of the state. In, in various ways here and around the world. Um, and I pray that we may, I pray for strength for the struggle for all of us, that we may find a new way to be together and be in the world together that can keep us all safe, all of our people and keep us all alive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, and to that end, I would also invite everyone um, to a vigil that we are planning for next Thursday. I'm going to share 
the image, um, a vigil that we will have against violence um, next Thursday. It will be at 5.30 p.m. in the church courtyard. Everyone is welcome. There will be music um, by Lara Payton and Wanda Pabellon and um, our pastoral team, Shereen Nelson, uh, the, our local alderman, um, and Rabbi Craig Morantz, our dear friend um, from Emmanuel Congregation, will be offering reflections, among others. So everyone is welcome to that event for further prayer um, and solidarity. So if we have nothing else to offer aloud, let us join together in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, you who give us life, who give us breath, who give us food for our bodies, food for our spirits, and companions for the journey. I thank you for all of the praises that have been shared, for all of the hope that has been lifted up in the midst of trial, in the midst of struggle, in the midst of pain. I thank you for all of the ways that you have provided companionship for those in times of trial. And I thank you for the gift that it is when we are called to be those companions. And I thank you for the joy it gives to be able to walk with one another in times of deepest trial. I pray that you may strengthen those bonds in these days to come, oh God, that you may strengthen the ties that bind us, the ties of your love that draw us together with friend, with family, with stranger, God, even with enemy. God, transform our relationships of conflict, our relationships of distrust in surprising ways that where we once saw an enemy, we might see an ally. Hmm. God, I pray that we may come together as your people, as one body to heal, to transform, to do your work. For so many are bleeding, so many are hurting, God. And in your spirit, we know, we proclaim with confidence that healing is possible, that a better world is possible, that abundant life is possible, both on this earth as in heaven, God. We proclaim that abundant life in our midst today. And we hold that proclamation as we move into the work of this week, wherever it may take us. And we reaffirm our commitment to one another and to you with that prayer that you offered at a meal where you fed your disciples to give them strength before the time of great trial. So we repeat that prayer as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
sisters and brothers, siblings and friends. We give thanks for the seven Davids this morning. Oh, love that will not let us go. Jesus is inviting us to breakfast that we might receive the nurturance we need for the journey ahead, that we might stand with those who are struggling, that we might stand with those who are celebrating, that we might stand with those who are alone, that we might stand with those in the crowd. My brothers and sisters, you and I, as those disciples, are being invited to breakfast. I pray this morning that somewhere in the service we have had, that you have heard that, that invitation, that you have felt that invitation, and that like the disciples, you are willing to sit down because it is a love that will not let you go. Even though we will depart from this time of worship and in this arena in which we worship, the love of Christ will not let us go. The love of the father will not let us go. The love of the mother will not let us go. So I send you out this day. I send you out to, to be and to be who God has desired you to be. So from the one who can hold you faultless and lift you presently before the God, may you be blessed this day. Go forth in that spirit and in that truth and have breakfast. Thank you.